Hey guys, Jake here coming at you with another math problem today. Today I'm going to be showing you how to find this improper integral, which is the integral from 1 to infinity of 1 over x to the p dx. So in this case, p is a constant, so we need to make sure as we're going through this, we're treating x as our variable and p as some unknown constant. So I actually found this problem in the Calculus Lifesaver by Adrian Banner. I've talked a lot about that book on my channel, but um, you can go check out my full thoughts on that. I'll put a little thing up in the corner of your screen where you can check that out if you're interested in that book. But the reason I'm gonna be going through this problem is this method is actually something that is on my Calculus 2 study guide that I came out with recently. Um, there's a link down in the description so you can check out that study guide. Uh, it's available for instant download, so if you wanna go grab that for yourself, you can start using it today. Um, but this kind of improper integral method is something that comes up a lot in Calc 2. So I'm gonna be showing you how to do that. And basically the formula from my study guide that goes over this, it it essentially shows us how to deal with these, these when we have bounds that are infinity or negative infinity. And basically the formula that we're gonna be using here is the one that says, as long as this function that we're integrating here exists for all the x values that you're integrating over, which you know this function is gonna exist for all x's except x equals zero, no matter what value we have in there for p, that's going to be true, that this, this 1 over x to the p is going to exist for all x values between 1 and infinity. So as a result, we know we can use this trick. And basically what that trick says is if we want to evaluate this integral, we don't really know how to evaluate bounds that are infinity. Because, you know, think about kind of that process as you, you integrate this function and then you evaluate over the bounds. That essentially means you have to plug those bounds into your function. Well, the problem is infinity is not a number. So you can't plug infinity into a function. It doesn't really make sense. But what we can do is instead, we want to instead take the limit as t goes to infinity of the integral from one to t of one over x to the p dx. So now the reason for this is we're not really dealing with the fact that these bounds are infinity until later on because we're gonna be able to evaluate this integral, plug in our bounds, which now our bounds are just one and t, which actually makes sense to plug in. And then we're gonna figure out what that does as our t gets infinitely big. So now it actually makes kind of mathematical sense, basically. We can actually plug some number that's going to infinity into a function without actually plugging in infinity. So let's think about this function now and how we can integrate this. Another way you could think of one over x to the p is by rewriting it as x to the negative p dx, right? So this basically just is, you know, you can move something from a denominator to a numerator of a fraction uh, by making the power of it negative. So these two things are exactly the same. So the reason we wanna do that is now we can integrate this using the power rule. Well, that'll be true as long as p is not one. If p is one, then we just have the integral of one over x. The integral of one over x is ln of x. So that's gonna be a little bit different problem, but what we're gonna go through here is how this will work out as long as p is not one. If p is one, you just have the antiderivative of one over x, which is natural log x. And then you would evaluate that from one to t. But if p is not one, we would use the power rule, right? The power rule just says that we're gonna keep our x, we're gonna raise our power by one, so we're gonna get negative p plus one, and then we're gonna divide by our new power. That's just what the power rule tells us. And as long as p is not one, this is exactly what this antiderivative would be. Then we just evaluate it from one to t, and then we need to keep our limit as t goes to infinity. So now to evaluate this from one to t, we just plug in t and then plug in one and then take the difference. So keep in mind, p is a constant. We're not plugging these things in for p, we're plugging them in for x. x is our variable. So we're gonna put t in for x. So that'll give us the limit as t goes to infinity of t to the negative p plus one over negative p plus one minus putting one in for x, one to any power is just gonna be one. So no matter what p is, one to the negative p plus one will just be one, and then over negative p plus one. So what we wanna think about now is there's actually gonna be kind of two different cases we wanna consider. So we know that p 
key is meant to be some positive number. And the reason we, you know, that was kind of the whole point of this. If P was a positive number, P is greater than zero, then X to the, we would have X to some negative power. If we have X to some positive power and we integrate that all the way to positive infinity, that, that area is going to be infinitely large. That's not going to work out. So we know that P is meant to be a positive number. And we also know that P would not be positive one because like I said earlier, if P was positive one, we don't get to use the power rule. We already know that integral, that's something else. So basically we have kind of two different cases here. We have P being less than one and we have P being greater than one. If P is less than one, that means P is between zero and one. Let's think about what we have here. If P is between zero and one, negative p plus one is going to be a positive number right because if p is less than one negative p is going to be between negative one and zero adding one is going to be enough to get it up into the positives so t to a positive number if we have t to a positive number as t goes to infinity that's just going to keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger that's basically like saying we're taking the square root or the cubed root or the fourth root of an infinitely large number that just keeps getting bigger and bigger. If you, even though you're taking the fourth root or the fifth root or whatever it is, the thing that you're taking the root of just keeps getting infinitely large. That fifth root or whatever root is still going to get infinitely large. So if P is less than one, this, as T goes to infinity, this numerator is just going to go up to infinity. It's just going to keep going higher and higher and higher. So then having an infinitely large number divided by some positive number is still going to be an infinitely large number. So this whole piece is going to go off to infinity. And then we're just going to have minus some constant. Well, this constant's not really going to do anything if this piece here goes off to positive infinity. So basically, if, if our P is less than one, this limit goes off to infinity which basically means that this integral that we started with, if P is less than one, is gonna be an infinitely large area. It's not gonna work. We're not gonna get some number. So what that means is that integral is divergent or it's infinity. If P is greater than one, that means negative P is gonna be you know, uh, a, a more negative number than negative one like negative two or negative three, adding one, it's still gonna be negative. So this, this T is gonna be raised up to a negative power. Well, remember, T raised up to a negative power, negative two, let's just say, is the same as one over T to the positive power. So if we have our T raised up to a negative power, that's the same as one over T to that same positive power. And that would be true no matter what this power was. But what that means is now this, as t goes to infinity, this denominator is going to infinity, just like this numerator was going to infinity in this case. So as a result, if our denominator is going to infinity, if we have some constant divided by a number that's getting bigger and bigger and bigger, that fraction as a whole is gonna go towards zero. So if p is greater than one, we're gonna have t to a negative power. As t goes to infinity, this is gonna go to zero. So some number going to zero divided by some other constant is still going to be zero. So this whole term as T goes to infinity is going to be zero in this case. So as T goes to infinity, we're going to get zero minus one over P negative P plus one. Which is just going to be negative one over negative P plus one. So if our P is greater than one, then we know that this entire integral is just gonna converge to one, negative one over negative P plus one, which is actually gonna end up being a positive number because if P is greater than one, this will be a negative number and then the negatives will cancel and we're gonna get a positive number. So this is helpful to know because basically whatever constant p you have being you know in your power here it's going to end up working out that way um, where you can basically just say 
that entire integral from 1 to infinity is just going to simplify down to negative 1 over negative p plus 1. So like I said, this uses uh, one of the formulas on my Calculus 2 study guide. Go check that out. There's a link down in the description where you can go grab that, download it right now, and start using it today. Thanks, and see you next time.